Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. I know it's been a minute since I've made a video, and part of that is because I've been really busy with a couple of projects, one of which I'm really excited about. So this video is a quick update. It's not really well planned like, well, like I'd like to think some of my videos are, but I wanted to let you know what I was working on, and hopefully you'll be as excited about it as I am. The project, or the main one, is this little board over here. I'll show you a close-up of that. Hopefully you're seeing that. This is a smart power switch. Some of you have probably seen a couple of videos I did about bad fuses. There's one thing about fuses, even if you're using a good quality proper fuse, that is still difficult with fuses. And that is, if you are at a POTA activation, or a soda activation, or maybe field day, or anything where you're away from your shack out in the field, and you happen to blow a fuse in your setup for your rig or any of your other equipment, Murphy says you are not going to have the proper replacement fuse with you, because you will have used up the last one of that value the last time, or you forgot to pack the box of fuses, or all kinds of reasons. That's why I'm excited about this smart switch. So this is using a solid state switch to turn power on and off. But the solid state switch combined with a microcontroller is also doing the fuse protection. A lot of the, I shouldn't say a lot, some of the car manufacturers, I know Tesla's doing this and I think some of the major manufacturers are planning this in the next couple of years. They are going to e-fuses or electronic fuses. They're getting rid of fuses in newer cars. And the advantage is, if a circuit blows, you can have it automatically reset, you can have it report the fault, all kinds of stuff. And that's exactly what this board does. So I have my redneck test stand here that I've been testing this with. And the design goal for this board is to provide power switching up to 30 amps continuous, which should run any 100 watt radios without any problem. Uh, it's not gonna run a kilowatt amp, but it'll run 100 watt rigs, lots of accessories, and pretty much anything you're normally using, you should be able to cover with 30 amps. I've tested it so far up to 25 amps continuous for about an hour and a half to make sure that thermally it would work okay. And this is just a prototype proof of concept board. I got a few mods to make for the final boards for it, but even with this prototype board, it was well within its thermal limits running that long. So let me show you how this works really quickly. I have a Node-RED program running on my computer over here off camera, and I have two of these lights turned on. This is a 12 volt heater by the way, so this draws about 10 or 11 amps by itself. And these are just old school car headlights, so I can vary the current. Let me go turn this on and then we'll see. So now it's on, and I turned it on with a software command one of the other things about this board is it has an RS-485 serial interface. And if any of you are familiar with Ham Radio Workbench, that's another Ham Radio podcast. George, KJ6VU, one of the hosts of that podcast, he makes station controller equipment and he makes also like high-end repeater control equipment. And he has this control network called the Device Control Network. It operates over RS-485, which is a very simple serial interface. You can buy a little USB to RS-485 converter to plug into a laptop for, I think, 10 or 15 bucks. I have a couple of them that I picked up. And it's a very robust protocol that will work over really long distances. So I'll have a link to uh, some of George's stuff and you can see what the protocol, he, he's got the pro protocol published and he said people are welcome to use the protocol as long as they give his company credit for using that protocol. So this will be compatible with his station controller equipment as well. In addition to that protocol though, this can also be turned on and off with just a simple switch closer and closure 
and it's also got status outputs for telling you the outputs on and telling you if it's faulted. I've just got a couple of LEDs connected to it right now. So this board can work completely standalone without any kind of computer equipment or you can use it as part of a remote station where you can turn it on and off. And especially with the remote station, if something overcurrent trips the circuit, you can have it automatically reset. So we're running about 9 amps right now, and you should be able to see that on the node red screen. And I have the trip current set for a typical nominal 10 amp fuse. So I have it actually set to start tripping at about 11 amps. So I'm going to turn on one more headlight here, and you see it tripped offline. Now I've got it set to reset itself in 5 seconds. Now I just tried, and you'll see that the lights just flickered very briefly because it turned on, said, oop, overcurrent, and if I turn one of these off, then in five seconds it should come on and it'll stay back on. Now one of the features that this will have, it's not in the firmware yet, but it'll be in the next phase, before it's in production, this will be in there, is there's a maximum retry count. So if you have something that's like really a hard short where something has actually gone bad, you could have it set up to retry, say, three times, and if it doesn't stay on after three retries, then it stays off. You can also set the overcurrent so that on any overcurrent, it goes off and stays off until you turn it off and back on. Don't need to change any components, you just have to turn it off and back on, and then that'll reset it. Now, the other features that this has is over and under voltage. So I'm going to take my power supply here. I've got the under voltage trip set on this for 11 volts right now. And if I start turning this down, you see the lights are dimming a little bit here. There, I got to the trip point and it shut off. Now the under and over voltage trips, those are set up to always automatically restart. So if I bring the voltage back up, it comes back on. And then if I take the voltage up, um, I think I have the over voltage set for 14 and a half volts. And when it hits the trip voltage, it shuts off. So if I bring the voltage back down, then it'll come back on. And I do have a little bit of a, about a half a volt of hysteresis in that so that it, if you're right on the hairy edge, it's not going to keep tripping on and off. It has to go about a half a volt below the over voltage trip and it has to come up a half a volt above the under voltage trip. So there you have it. Sorry this wasn't a very well-planned video, but I wanted to at least get you an idea of what I had going on and why I haven't been around. I've been working on this. But I think this is going to be a really exciting product. And actually, I've got a question that maybe you can leave me an opinion in the comments. When you look at the close-up picture of this board, you'll see that I just have wire terminal connectors on it, so you can just uh, screw a wire into it for the input power and the output power. I'm kind of debating whether I want to do Anderson power poles or just wire connections. They both have advantages, but I'm not quite sure which way to go. So I'd be very interested in your opinions on whether I should go with just wire screw terminal wire connectors or with Anderson power poles. Take a look in the description for links to the device control network information and George KJ6VU's products if you're interested in those. You should also check out the Ham Radio Workbench podcast. George and several other hosts on there talk about all kinds of things. They have some cool guests on and it's really interesting. I, I get a lot of information out of it that I find very useful. You'll also find the links to the Fuse videos in there. There's links to my store and my website in there as well. Anyway, that's all for this time. I will hopefully have more on this very soon. We're just heading out of town and I wanted to get this video done before we left. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.